everybody and welcome to World History. Um, this year I am Beth Miskowski and I am your student's world history teacher. Um, through this video I just wanted to talk a little bit about myself and talk a little bit about what world history is going to look like this year. So what you will see um, up on the screen is my email address first and foremost and that is the best way of getting a hold of me if you or your student has any questions or concerns or if they are not going to be in person when they are supposed to be or whatnot. Uh, email is the best way of getting a hold of me and then my classroom number of course is 160. Um, just a little bit about myself, I've been with Brexel School since 2005. Uh, most of my career has been up here at the high school teaching 9th and 10th grade American World History. In 2012, I started to have my children and took some time off. And over the last couple of years upon my return, I've been part-time high school, part-time middle school. So I've traveled back and forth, and this is my first year back at the high school full-time um, teaching American World and Sociology. I have four small children, so as many of you can relate to, uh, life is very busy, and um, I'm looking forward to a, a good year um, in this crazy hybrid model right now. So this, as I explained to your students earlier in the week, is part two of world history. It's the exciting conclusion to what they learned about in seventh grade. Uh, we refer to it as modern world history because for the most part, other than our first unit, uh, which will be more of a review unit, we are going to be studying roughly 1600 to as close to the present as we can. So we will start um, probably with the Enlightenment and Scientific Revolution once we get past our review unit, and then we will go from there. So it's not a repeat from what they learned in seventh grade. It's all really interesting new information that I know a lot of the kids are really excited about. So I look forward to a really good year. Couple of things uh, that I wanna go over. Um, and first and foremost, of course, this year is safety. So I say safety first. Um, these are the safety protocols that I went over with your students uh, upon entering my classroom. Uh, number one, masks must be worn properly during the class period. Okay, that is a must. Number two, students will not congregate and will remain, uh, maintain appropriate social distancing. My desks are all measured out um, to proper social distancing measurements. Um, they know not to move their seats. And upon entering their room, unfortunately, they need to go directly to their seat and stay there until the end of the period. Um, and I talked about there being a no tolerance policy this year with discipline. Um, if somebody does something out of line, um, they will be immediately sent to the office because um, there just can't be any um, issues this year with discipline because of COVID-19. Uh, number four, students are to bring their own supplies to class with them. There can't be any sharing, so they need to make sure they have chargers and computers that work really well. Uh, and if they need Kleenex or anything else of that nature, they, they do need to bring it to class. Um, and they will remain in their seats for the duration of the period. We went over raising your hand, emailing me questions, that sort of thing. Uh, but safety is my number one priority this year, and so I will um, be reminding them of these as we move forward. We wanna keep everybody safe and healthy. All right, so other than that, important items. Um, Number one, all information and assignments are on Google Classroom, and all assignments are turned in through Google Classroom. So like I said, I'm a mom of four, and two of my kids are in school, and I know to me the most important thing uh, about a class is to have everything in one place. So it's very easy to find, and it's very user-friendly. So everything the students need to know is on Google Classroom. All the materials, the videos, any links, any assignments can be found there. Um, number three, when in-person students need a computer and headphones for class. So in terms of what they need to bring on a daily basis, it's a pair of headphones or earbuds and a charged computer. Number four, when working remotely, students must join Google Meet sessions at the beginning of the period, um, and that information can be found in their Google Calendar. 
The first week I kept things very simple and I just had them click a basic attendance question um, because I wanted to see what was working and what wasn't working. Um, for other teachers in the building. And so what I've decided to do is when your students are working remotely, they are expected to join the Google Meet session for the first 15 minutes or so of the period. I will take their attendance, I will give them an introduction of the day, and I will ask if there are any questions. For the kids who are remote, after that is completed, I will send them on their way to do their work, and then I will turn my attention to the in-person students. So that is how I'm going to be handling attendance. I'm going to be um, putting all the information through Google Calendar so that every day they have a link, if they are remote, on how to join that meeting. Number five, when working remotely, it is expected that students complete the assigned tasks. So the due dates are all listed, and I have Google Classroom set up in a very organized way by week. So they should be able to see what is assigned on a daily basis. Number six, unit tests will be given during in-person days. So at the end of the unit, when there's time for a big test, they will take it in person, more than likely on their devices. Number seven, all grades can be found in progress book. So if you have any questions about missing work or whatnot, um, progress book is where you can find out that information. And then finally, number eight, a week at a glance, will be posted on Google Classroom Stream at the beginning of the week. And I think this is super important, especially for those students who plan ahead. Um, I will try my best the Friday before the weekend to post a Google Sheet that shows the students what they will be working on for the next week, um, A through L and M through Z, um, so that they can plan ahead and figure out what they need to do for world history that following those following five days. Um, there could be some minor changes to that, but for the most part, that should at least give them an idea as to what the expectations are before the week starts. So my goal is organization. Um, my goal is to keep um, everybody tuned in, as I was telling them, to what is going on, regardless of what group they are in. So I can't stress enough, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop me an email. Um, please have your students become very, very familiar with Google Classroom and how I have it arranged. Um, I am here to help. The class sizes are for the most part pretty small, and so there should be a lot of time for questions and answers, especially when the kids are in person. I think this can be a really great year uh, in modern world history. I think um, there is great information to be taught, and for those students who are really, really into, um, you know, learning about the world and, and how we came to be where we are, I think this is going to be a great course. So again, welcome. I hope we all have a wonderful year. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to drop me an email, and have a great rest of the evening. Thank you.